my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. In today's video, we're going to be addressing another video request. And this request comes from jteddymdgmail. And he says, uh, can you see this? Can you make a video on how to install WatchLister? Sync, Plex, WatchList, Radar, and Sonar. Let's get to this, but before we start this, I wanna thank another donor that has given a donation to the channel. Thank you very much, Harish Taluri, for your donation to the channel. Let's go ahead and go to the GitHub repository of WatchLister. You can find this in github.com slash nylony slash WatchLister. And if you come here, you see that it is a customizable sync of the Plex watch list to the Sonar and Radar applications. It has been released 22 times, so it's still kind of early on its uh, life cycle, but it shows that they're working on it. And it has three contributors, a very small amount of people, but it kind of makes sense because the application is actually very simple. There's not a lot to it. Basically, watch lister syncs stuff that you mark in Plex to your watch list, and it passes that onto Sonar or Radar so that then it can be downloaded by those applications. So basically it's another way to add content to Sonar on Radar, but from Plex directly. So you find something that you're interested in and then you click the button that says add it to the watch list and you'll see that it'll be added to Radar or Sonar. And then the application that will start looking for that content that you want to watch. And it basically relies on several ways to pull Plex for information. So it tells us that it uses the, the RSS feeds, it uses the metadata, it uses a GraphQL calls and also uh, other metadata for other users. So you can retrieve things that you want or that friends want in theory. And it says basically that it uses a combination of all those methods to then, you know, check for what you have marked and do it pretty fast. And it also allows you to also delete the stuff. Let's say you had something marked that you wanted to watch it in Plex and then once you remove that, like you uncheck that watch list marking in Plex, it'll also delete all the files from Sonar and Radar. So you have that option too. And it says basically there's a few requirements here that we have to cover. It says that for this application to work, it is recommended uh, that you have a Plex Pass subscription. So basically you have to pay for Plex. And if you don't do that, then it has a possibility of still working, but then it's going to be a slower process because then you cannot leverage things that you get with a subscription. It says that you need to have Sonar version 3 or higher and Radar version 3 or higher. And the visibility of your friends watch list has to be changed to either friends only or friends of friends. So how do you do that? Well, they give you an option here to click on the link and that's gonna take you to the Plex account. So once you're in your Plex account, that's usually the app.plex.tv slash like desktop and some other stuff. And then you go to the settings account and then you should go to a section here that says account visibility and activity sharing. You click on edit and then you go where it says account visibility down here. By default, you're gonna have any one sign into Plex but you have to change it to either friend of friends or friends only for it to work. So that's how you do that. Then we go back in here and it says that we need to also have Docker. In, my, in our case, that's fine because we're gonna be running this in a Synology NAS using Container Manager, which is Docker under the hood. And then you need to find your Plex token here and it gives you a, a link to a page that tells you how to do that. So if you go into that page, it tells you basically you have to sign into your Plex account, go to an item in your library, so an episode or a movie or something like that, and then you have to view the XML for it and then you'll see at the very end of the URL, the Plex token for your instance. So you do that by going to some episode, for example, in my case, I'm selecting Sakamoto Days, which is a new ser series that is coming out in Japan. And I'm at uh, episode number one. So you see I'm in a specific video and then you click on the three dots, you go into get info and then you say view XML. That's gonna open this XML that describes all of this content. And then you go into the URL. At the very end, you have the token for your instance. And then we go back. It says that we also need to see the configuration options here. And when you click here, it's gonna take you to this URL here. Here we'll be looking for the Docker Compose option. And this is how we're gonna be deploying this into our NAS. 
So we're gonna copy this and it says that basically we need to have the sonar API key, we need the radar API key, and we need the Plex token that I just explained how you get it. So we're gonna do this and then we need to uh, mount a volume in our NAS, which is a folder to hold the configuration of our application. And then that's basically it. I'm not gonna use the volumes config, that's irrelevant in our case. So let's go into the NAS and then make these changes. First thing, I'm gonna go into my NAS here. I'm going to oh, go into file station. And again, in file station, I'm gonna go into the project. I'm gonna create a new folder for watch this star. And I'm gonna go into the container location where I put all the configurations and stuff. And I'm gonna create a new folder here for watch this star. So this is where we're gonna have our configuration file. Now that I have that, then I can just go into the container and create a new project here. So let's say watch lister. And I'm going to pick that project that I just created here. And then I'm gonna create a Docker Compose. I'm gonna paste this, but I need to make changes to it later. So let me just save for now, but not trigger a build. And we're gonna go down here to watch lister once it shows up. So here we go. And now we can see this in a bigger screen. And here's where we're gonna make our changes. So we're defining a new service that is gonna be watch lister. We're gonna be using the watch lister uh, latest image. And we have to name this container something. So I'm gonna go in here and add the container underscore name option. And I'm gonna name this watch lister. Then in here we have to specify a few environment variables. I'm going to go in here and put the time zone as America, New York in my case. And I need to also specify the user that I'm gonna use to run this container. So I'm gonna put PUID 1026, PGID 100. And this is the default administrator. So the first administrator account that you create on your NAS and the group that is automatically assigned to that. And then in here, we have also to specify the sonar API key, the radar API key, and the Plex token in this area. But let me go first here and copy the folder for the configuration of watch lister. So I'm gonna go here and say, copy all of this. And I'm gonna replace this in the NAS. So let's make a note here, NAS folder versus container folder. In the NAS is gonna be that and in the container is gonna be this. So we're storing our configuration file in the NAS so that if we need to reset the container or something, it doesn't lose the configuration and then restart unless we stop it. And that's basically all that we need to have here. Let's get those API keys first. So the first one's gonna be Sonar. So we go into our Sonar instance, go to settings, and then go to general, and we'll see the API key here that we can copy. And I'm gonna put that in here. And for radar, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go into radar, settings, general, and we'll see the API key here. And we're gonna copy this API key and put it here. Now the Plex token, you get it from the URL and you put it here. In my case, I'm not gonna show that. So we're gonna go ahead and then save this and build the project. So let's do that. So now we click build and uh, we wait for it to pull the image and build the container and all that. So I'll be back when that is done. All right, we got the exit code zero and a notification here letting us know that the watch lister was built properly. We see the container up here showing up, so let's wait for it to load. And then I'm gonna see the logs of the container to see if we have access to the application. Go into the log, and then in here, I don't see anything happening. Okay, I've refreshed and I saw more information, and this is important for you to know because the configuration example here mentions what the configuration YAML file looks like, but it doesn't really tell us much. And then when we do this, we're expecting it to work, but it does not work. So we need to make changes to this configuration file that gets created by the application. Because if we see here in the logs, it says that it was not able to connect to Sonar because it's looking for Sonar somewhere else in another port. So we need to make sure that we tell it where to properly find Sonar and on which port. And the same is gonna happen with Radar because it cannot connect to them using its default configuration. So we have to go into the NAS in that folder and then we see the configuration YAML file. 
we need to edit this so i'm going to open it with notepad and then we're going to make the changes that we need here the only thing that we need to do in here is the base url for sonar and the base url url for radar because the rest of the things are already specified in the configuration so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put the ip of the nas where i am running this so it is 10073 in my case for my virtual lab lab nas and the port 8082 for sonar and then i'm going to copy this because it's going to be exactly the same for radar but the port is going to be different to 8083 so those are the two changes that we need to make the api key we have defined in the docker file so we don't need to do that here if you don't want to have it in the docker compose file you could actually just put it here if that's what you prefer and i'm gonna le leave everything else here as commented out because i don't think it's necessary honestly to make those changes so only the base url for sonar and radar is the things that i'm going to change i'm not going to change anything else so i'm i have already saved this oh and this is a yaml configuration file so we also need to make sure that we uncomment this part here which is apparent to this so sonar it's telling it that it's just a sonar configuration and then under that we have to put two spaces and then the base url is going to be defined and the same for radar we need to uncomment the radar definition and then we put the base url and then it's going to know that it belongs to what and we save this and then we should be able to restart the application and then get it running all right, I have restarted the application. As you can see here, now it says that it was successful at connecting with Sonar and Radar. And it can um, generate the watch list for the friends and for yourself from the Plex application. So everything's looking good. I have the Plex paid subscription, so that's why I have the full benefits. And then in here we get some details about the Sonar configuration. It knows the proper url that we defined and it has the api key and it knows the folder for the different categories for example anime is here and in radar it sees the movies and all of that for some reason and i don't see the tv here which is interesting but yeah it's, it's seen the anime at least so i don't know that's perhaps something that has to be worked on the application because i don't see that it also found the tv folder it just shows the anime so that's something that the developers have to figure out or or we'll, we'll see next it's running it says that the app is responsive and everything so now in theory we should be able to go into plex this is my plex instance and then if i want to add something to my watch list let's say i'm gonna go for a movie so i'm gonna have uh, my radar here the way that we do this is we could go into more and then go into discover and it will show us things that are like trending right now that other people are watching and stuff so we could basically use this to figure out new things that we don't have that we would like to watch so in this case this looks like movies up here and, uh, and let's look for a movie here that i know i don't have so for example let's say we want Oh, this is a series so it shows both series and movies at the same time okay so i know i don't have gladiator 2 and i'm gonna go into radar i don't have anything here right now so i should be able to just click here on gladiator and then click on the add to watch list button here and then it should add it to my watch list and then it should synchronize eventually to the application here where i will then be able to download that content so I don't know how long it's going to take, so let's give it a little bit of time and then check on it. All right, it took a little bit of time. I would say maybe like two or three minutes, but now we can see that it did add Gladiator 2 to my radar instance. And now my instance is going to be trying to fetch that content for me. Let's do again another test. Let's go back into Discover, but let's look for a series in this case. So we're going to select the Squid Game series here. I'm going to add it to the watch list and I'm going to go back into my sonar. As you can see, I currently don't have anything. So I'm going to refresh here and we'll see that it takes a little bit of time and then eventually it'll show up in here. So let me pause and come back when I can actually see it here. All right, it took about a minute or maybe a little bit over a minute. And there we go. We have Squid Game added to our series here in Sonar. So now Sonar is going to try to fetch that content for us. And we added those directly from Plex, given that Plex has the option here to discover new content. And then you can see what people are watching. And then based on that, 
make your choice of what kind of thing you want to watch. So you don't have to use an application like Overseer or Jellyseer or anything like that. This is another option that you have to add content. You can do it directly from your TV, for example. If you have like a smart TV with the Plex app, you could just add stuff directly like that or on the web site where you can see your content too. So this is another way for you to add content to your ours and that's gonna be it for this video i hope you liked it if you did hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so that helps us to grow you know gives us access to more people and hopefully in the future we can get sponsorships so then we can focus more on the channel also remember i am not monetizing this channel and that's on purpose so you should have not received an ad on my video that also means that i'm also not making money from the videos that i upload on youtube so i rely entirely on your support Feel free to donate using the link in the description below if you like the content and you want to support me. There's also a Bitcoin address that you can use to send donations using Bitcoin if you prefer. And also remember, I make all of these videos because I see comments in the comment section below of things that you would like to see me cover. So feel free to write in the comment section below if you like the content, if there's some other thing that you would like me to cover any applications that you're interested in and all that uh, stuff like that. And I'll put it in the queue and do my best to make the content for you. Feel free to share the video with people that you think might find it useful. And that's going to be it for this one. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.